Is that you? What? Is it truly you, my friend? It is indeed. What brings you so far from home? All here in Seattle. No. Covering stolen artifacts. And I must leave immediately. This Travel on the Orient I have arrangements yet. I just learned, and I'm returned to England. Very well. Pleasure to seek sleeper. If the direct accept pleasure, and will for I will. Me, sir, you are the time. The princess, or if she makes train, there is absolutely no problem for you. Oh, yes, yeah. to know, I know, baby Rhoda. Rodents? Of course, As you demand. Train it has been. You? Our bath not. Now retire. Express. Director of the lab at your service. And this gentleman is you. Is. That train. Train. Yesterday I recovered artifacts worth several millions. Please. Take it. It's a Orient Express. I will arrange to circuit.
How ticket has been stolen? I I breakfast and went back. My ticket gone, and other things were on the floor and tossed them. Begin in your room. Will you lead the? Must it need not or I this time? That's the Captain Albert Knott, fourth. Oh, one mystery. Salvation. We wait. Arbuth not. Archibald. Formerly British Army. Now retired. I'm taking words express. But what business is that of yours? Easy. My room's along here. 4-11.
pela descrição. Eu tô This is a foreign country. You We will enter. Hmm, a fact sheet from a tour of Saint Sophia. Hmm, a fact sheet. A brochure for this fascinating city. Thief to have exited through the maid. Or it contains just over two hundred dollars and the usual cards. The wallet is somewhat warm. It contains This earring, it is not the first time I've seen it, but where? This earring, this ear... Then Mustafa... A perfume bottle, empty, suggestive. With trace, after is scented. Skillfully
How were you at breakfast, Captain? Just a roll and some coffee. How do The room is apparently empty. I will leave it for the moment. Go away, please. A brief word, sir. I will give you two brief words. Go away. Monsieur. I've been traveling all night from New York. Must I call the management? Pardon, monsieur. I do believe we have awakened a thief. A list of travel expenses, but how did these papers end up on the floor? And reservation for the Bosphorus Ferry. A conspicuous gallantry cross for meritorious service in Iraq, yet he only retired as a captain. A conspicuous gallantry cross for meritorious service in Iraq, yet he only retired as a captain. An earring? A previous guest, I suspect. I don't wear them. Did you leave the window open? I think not. The thief had wings. The best are not military style. The I'm not going to make my own bloody bed. Interesting pronoun, that. We. Culprit.
That's the... was revealed. Rest assured, we will soon find your ticket. It's a catch. I'll the Orient Express. We if you will be we may both make a please give me an account of movements yesterday. Most of my day in Istanbul. Well, as the sun was setting, the can confirm I was alone when I locked up my key. I had no visitors in my room. Uh, truth, Captain Albert. I want you to find my ticket. Can you explain the earring I found on the bedside table? An earring? Ah. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, forgive me, Mr. Poirot. I had some business correspondence that wanted answering. Hotel provides help for business travelers. They said I dictated a letter and she mailed it for me. I hadn't noticed that she had lost an earring. And did you invite this uh, secretary? This woman may be the thief we are looking for. That was yesterday evening. The ticket was still there when I went. She can't have taken it. Hmm. Never mind. Easily checked. And uh, there was no other person in your room? Fine. Your job quickly. I'll be downstairs. May I... ...staff begin... ...every morning at breakfast time. And there are no guests in the room. May One of our staff stole the... No, 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 no. Do not distress yourself. We seek... Her at once. Ask her to bring her lawn. Journey. You tell to. Clean room for one this morning. Room? Yes, that. See a ticket. Uh, I... It's a ticket. It was a wallet, but of course I did not touch it. Did you open the? We always air the room. To close the window. What? From next door was pounding on the wall. Distance. Quickly finish. I'm afraid I left the window open. I'm so sorry. Window left open. Papers on the floor. Cleaning the room. I believe. You realize what happened. I must admit I'm not right this time.
I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. Poirot is not... Mademoiselle, would you be so kind as to look in the sheets from room 411? And so the missing train ticket completes its strange journey. An open window, a laundry cart, and an annoying neighbor. But chance is the only guilty party in this dark mystery. Mr. Poirot, I apologize. I believe my concern got the better of me, and I forgot myself. Thank you. It was a case of great magnitude. I'm glad I was up to the challenge. And that, I think, is that. Our bags are all packed. I have my ticket and papers. If you give me yours, I'll hang on to mine. But as your secretary... As my secretary, you see to the bags, Hector. Yes. Yes, sir. That man, I have a curious impression of him. As if I were observing a wild animal, uncaged. We must leave for the station. Our bags are in the taxi. Did you find the ticket? It was a case most difficult, but somehow Hercule Poirot managed. I knew you could do it. Now we can sit back and enjoy a relaxing train ride. You are in luck, Poirot. Of course, no journey on this train is ever ordinary. But this is a special occasion. To celebrate the 140 years of the Orient Express, the engine will be none other than the splendid Pacific 231G558. There she is, Poirot. The most celebrated train in history. Oh, my eyes fill with tears of pride. It is time we were aboard, my friend. Follow me. The wagon lead conductor, Pierre Michel, will direct you to your compartment. Lead the way, book. It was built in France in 1922 by the company Batignol Châtillon. At the time of its purchase by the SNCF in 1938, it could reach speeds up to 130 kilometers per hour. <laughs> Wait until you see. It is like traveling back in time. Today, the train is limited to 100 kilometers per hour. I assure you, that will be more than fast enough to get you to Paris in time for your connection to London. In the meantime, you will bask in the magic that is the Orient Express.
Good evening, monsieur. Your compartment is number 202. However, I am afraid that all the others are already full. Full? But how can that be? It is incredible, monsieur. All the world likes to travel tonight. All the same, you must find room for this gentleman here. I can exercise my powers of observation while they try to find me a bed. He is a friend of mine. He can have number 201. It is... What? Number 201? Yes, monsieur. We are full. Full everywhere. 140th anniversary. Michel, listen to me very... Darling, we have to get aboard. I know, I know. I have heard of the phobia of fear of flying, but fear of trains? Now you're making fun of me. Never mind. We'll board shortly, once our compartment is ready. Darling, we have to get a boat. I have heard of the phobia of fear of flying, but... Now you're making fun of me. Never, my love. We'll board shortly, once our compartment is ready. Notice the young woman from the hotel. She again wishes to watch the old man with his little friend, but not to be seen herself. Is everything aboard the train, Hector? In your compartment, Mr. Ratchet. I'm having them disinfect the room again, as you instructed. I also got a call from the Indians. The sale is going through as you expected. There was never any doubt. No other phone calls, Hector, from Geneva or Venice? No, sir. Who were you expecting? Never you mind. Check our tickets. We're not going in until everything is confirmed. The young man seems quite agreeable, but the other... The older man is something quite different. Mary. Not now. Not now. When it's all over, when it's behind us, then. Is the young woman from the hotel. She again wishes to watch the old man with his little friend, but not to be seen herself. Why did you order so much lobster, Hotaru? My dear Freya, I need it for my specialty on the second night. And if the lobster a la mori isn't fresh, the passengers will know. We don't have enough space for my desserts. Tonight, molten chocolate cake. Tomorrow, my specialty. That is not my concern. They will not have room for them anyway. Serve your lobster tonight. Chicken a la mori must be the first night dish for the travelers. It is easier to digest. Ugh, you really are the egomaniac everyone says you are. I have every reason to be. I am the engine. You are just the kaboom. Well, I am mortified. The 140th anniversary, perhaps, but such a plague of passengers. <laughs> Yes. 
fantastic. Well done. Adequate. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. Poirot, wow. we have a solution. A gentleman has not yet come. An Englishman, a Monsieur Harris. A name of good omen. It is already time to leave. What do I care for, Mr. Harris? As Monsieur pleases, I had your things sent straight to your compartment. Unfortunately, you will be with another traveler. No. Only for the first night. It cannot be helped. I will survive, Monet. Monsieur Book, we can't find enough space in the kitchen refrigerator to store all of my ingredients. How is it possible? His recipes are extravagant. We need to leave something on the platform. If my lobsters don't go, I don't go. And have the passengers of the Orient Express go hungry? Never! Must I intervene? The problem is unworthy of power. But I do not intend to starve on the most luxurious train in the world. Thank you for coming to help us. It is impossible to fit everything into the Gary's refrigerator. Obviously, my entree are more important than dessert. If Mr. Mori delays his lobsters for a day or two, we can restock at another station. Delay? You ask me to delay? Brea? Calm yourself, my friend. I'm sure we can find a solution. Is that a diagram of the refrigerator? May I see it? Yes. He refuses to look at it. My little gray cells did not let me down.
Voilà. You saved tomorrow night's dinner. Mr. Paul, I will reserve the finest lobster just for you. I look forward to it, monsieur. And to the dessert, mademoiselle. Hopefully. That will be the last mystery you face on our journey, my dear Poirot. Your compartment for tonight only is at the back of the second-class carriage. Number 102. Tomorrow, you move to a private compartment. Welcome, Monsieur Poirot. I apologize for the delay. Thank you, Monsieur Michel. I am delighted you could accommodate me. Wrong compartment. I need to find number one or two. These first class rooms are very spacious and luxurious. Wrong compartment. I need to find number 102. Pardon me? Oh, my apologies. Wrong compartment. I need to find number 102. This lady has a style of her own, eccentric but chic. Excuse me, I think you made a mistake. You are Mr. Harris? No, my name is McQueen. I. There is no other berth on the train, monsieur. All is arranged. Yours is the upper berth. We start in one minute. The train's remarkably full. En voiture! Listen, sir, if you'd rather have the lower berth, easier and all that, well, that's all right by me. No, 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 you are too amiable. It is for one night only, at Belgrade. Oh, I see. You're getting out of Belgrade. Not exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner is served. 
you may join the rest of the passengers in the dining car. Excuse me, monsieur. Pierre asked me to inform you that a passenger left us, so his room is yours. Monsieur Bouc instructed that your things be transferred to room 202 during dinner. You will be more comfortable in first class. It is true what you say. Thank you, uh... Mr. Fouché, monsieur. Where will my new compartment be? Room 202 is at the far end of the previous car. I see, thank you. What is your position on the Orient Express? I manage the bar car, and I also do the restaurant car service. Well, then do not let me keep you. Lobster tonight, isn't it? Yes, indeed. I'll leave you to it, then. See you soon, monsieur. Please, my friend, join me. I have taken the liberty of ordering you your lobster. Thank you. It appears our fellow passengers are all gathered here again tonight. Ah. If I had but the pen of a Balzac, I would depict the scene. Oh, it is an idea, that. Ah, you agree. It has not been done, I think, and yet... It lends itself to romance, my friend. All around us are people of all classes, of all nationalities, of all ages. For three days, these people, these strangers to one another, are brought together. They sleep and eat under one roof. They cannot get away from each other. At the end of the journey, they part. They go their several ways, never perhaps to see each other again. Certainly it interests us, inviting us to watch and wonder about their lives. Ah, I know you, my friend. Even now, your mind, it is at work. Let us test it. For example, what do you make of those two? Mamma mia, you can feel the power of engine. We climb into the mountains with ease. I know something about the power, and this baby has it in spades. There's something special about a train. I'll give you that. I sell toys, and model trains are one of our biggest items. And not just for children, either. You sell model cars, too? Sure, but give me a train any day. Oh, my friend. What do you have against the cars? Now I work at Fortuna in Italy as a spokesperson. We are producing the next generation of electric cars, the Fortuna Firenze. Like the city, it is beautiful. We got the competitors looking over their shoulders so much, they're going to hit something. Didn't mean to be insulting. It's just that there's something magical about a train. Think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. That's the right answer. The loud gentleman is very confident, a master of his own fate. It is as much in the inflection as it is in the words. He believes in winning, also that he is 
the one who will win. You are a magician. Oh, it is not a parlor trick, my friend. It is simply observation. I was visiting my daughter. She works at the American Embassy in Istanbul. I told her she'd never find a husband there. Since I wanted to see Paris on my way home, she told me I should take this high-class train. I can't wait to see Paris. It looks beautiful in the movies, but it couldn't be more beautiful than Schenectady in the good old U.S. of A. <laughs> That's where I'm living now. And you, uh, Miss Debenham, was it? Where do you hail from? I was born in the U.K. Oh, that's in England, isn't it? What do you do for a living? I teach English to children in other countries. I see. Oh, I wish I spoke a foreign language. My daughter speaks several languages. Let me tell you about her work. It's very important. That was easy. There is much you can learn about someone just by observing them and listening. For example, that lady is reserved. She reveals little. She is self-contained. Some secret prompts her to allow her dinner companion to carry the conversation. I confess, in this case, what I witnessed in Istanbul suggests more. But I will respect her privacy. You will always amaze me. My friend, this is one of the best desserts I have ever eaten. You have always had the sweet tooth. But this... this... It is a masterpiece. I can't understand how the dessert can be so good. I would love to know what the recipe is. I couldn't tell what flavor the ice cream is. It looks like lemon. Look at the zest. Yes. I wasn't sure what that was. W what is the red fruit? It looks like a raspberry. Hmm. You have a good eye, Poirot. The biscuit is the foundation of the dessert. All else is built upon it. What do you think? The cocoa color clearly announces itself. Chocolate mousse. I am embarrassed. I may not recognize the ingredients, but I know what I like when I taste it. Poirot, I am embarrassed to ask you a great favor. My friend, I am on this train due to the great favor you have done me. How may I assist you? This dessert is sublime. If only I had the recipe. Unfortunately, the pastry chef, Miss Nielsen, she will guard her secrets. But you, my friend, I am sure you could make her confess. You wish me to persuade the pastry chef to give up her recipe? You who are the expert at interrogation. Book, it is a dessert. It is the pinnacle of desserts. You, my friend, who, as you say, are on this train. I blush to remind you. Fine, you win. Again, what wouldn't I do for you, my friend? Oh, thank you, Poirot. Good luck.
Good evening, mademoiselle. Good evening, sir. How can I help you? That was a magnificent dessert you served us tonight. I wanted to tell you personally how much both Monsieur Bouc and I enjoyed it. Thank you very much, sir. In fact, it is so good. Monsieur Bouc insists on knowing how you made it. Oh, sir, I'm sorry. You must know a chef never gives away their recipes. But, well, you helped with the refrigerator, and without space in it for me, there would have been no dessert. Very well. To prepare tonight's dessert, first I melt sugar to make caramel. Then I spread this caramel to make tuile. Between two tuile, I add a small scoop of lemon ice cream, and I put the whole thing on a strawberry crown. Poirot, you are suspicious even now. The pastry chef gave up her prized recipe a little too easily. I sense she wasn't entirely honest with me. somewhere to prove she's lying. She may be telling the truth, but I cannot be certain. She's lying, but why? Thank you for sharing your recipe with me, but I doubt those are strawberries you're using. Oops. You have a good eye, Monsieur Poirot. Very well. What fruit do you think I used? You used raspberries, not strawberries. I'm not fooled. You're right. Mr. Book, he couldn't tell the difference. Let's move on to the bottom part of the dessert. My favorite part of the dessert. First, I melted some butter. I crumbled pieces of chocolate into the butter. Then I placed the mix in a circular mold. Finally, I let the whole thing cool down to let it harden. Oh, the truth cannot hide from Poirot forever. That does not prove she's lying. She's lying, but it's certainly not chocolate that you've crumbled. I see you do have an excellent palate. Do you know what ingredients I used? A clever pastry chef might mix crushed biscuits with butter to create this delicious base. That's it. You're getting closer to the entire recipe. Closer? <laughs> I've caught murderers with less difficulty than this. I'll give you one last challenge. I'm sure you will be able to figure out the order I mix my ingredients in. If you can, you will have earned my recipe. Mademoiselle, solving the murder of Roger Ackroyd was easier than this.
As promised, my recipe is yours. Give me five minutes to write it down for you. Thank you. I am in your debt. I can take advantage of this moment to resume my little observations of the passengers. Did you enjoy the meal? I'm not used to meals like this. You do not have good restaurants in Kenya? Actually, we do. This is in the 1930s. I did not mean to offend. You didn't like the meal? The lobster, it was undercooked. And the potatoes were too dry. I expect, being Princess Dragomirov's assistant, you must be used to eating well. Cooking is an art. You do not need to wear the chef's hat to be an artist. What is your favorite dish? Curry roast. It is a specialty of mine. I must admit I'm not right this time. I do not think that's the right answer. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. I made a lot of progress on the expenses last night, sir. I should be done by tomorrow morning. You're supposed to be a fast worker, Hector. Sorry, sir. Working here is not as comfortable as in our office in Boston. You're lucky to ride in a train like this. That's the right answer. Here you are, sir. My recipe. Please tell Mr. Book he should not expect my recipes for the other desserts. Thank you very much, mademoiselle. I know he will sincerely appreciate the gesture, and I will make certain he gets the message. Oh, you were good such a long time. It proved more challenging than I expected. This is wonderful. Did it require the use of your little gray cells? More the exercise of my little taste buds. Thank you so much, my friend. Eat your dessert. You've earned it. Good evening. My name is Ratchet. I think that I have the pleasure of speaking to Mr. Hercule Poirot, is that so? You have been correctly informed, monsieur. Your exploits are well known on my side of the Atlantic. In my country, we come to the point quickly. Mr. Poirot, I want you to take on a job for me. Are you interested in earning a lot of money? My clientele, monsieur, is limited nowadays. I undertake very few cases. Why, naturally. I understand that. But this, Mr. Poirot, means big money. Big money. This is wrong, but I'm never far from this. My little gray cells did not let me down. What is it you wish me to do for you, Monsieur uh, Ratchet? Mr. Poirot, I am a rich man. A very rich man. Men in that position have enemies. I have an enemy. Monsieur, in my experience, when a man is in a position to have, as you say, enemies, then it does not usually resolve itself into one enemy only. Yes, I appreciate that point. Enemy or enemies, it doesn't matter. What does matter is my safety. My life has been threatened, Mr. Poirot. Now, I'm a man who can take pretty good care of himself. But as I look at it, a little insurance wouldn't hurt. 
And remember, big money. I regret, monsieur, that I cannot oblige you. What's wrong with my proposition? If you will forgive me for being personal, I do not like your face, Mr. Ratchet. Oh, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to finish my coffee peacefully. Another delightful trophy for my collection. A nightcap, Monsieur Poirot? A cup of coffee, Monsieur Fauché. Then I will retire to my new compartment. I am sure you will find it to be most comfortable. We have stopped? Yes, sir. Belgrade Station. If you'd like to go out and get some fresh air, now is the time. The train leaves at 9.15. No, no, I see that it is snowing. I will not seek out the fresh air. Probably a wise decision. May I suggest a chocolate to accompany your coffee? It is produced by my father, the best chocolatier in Switzerland. I would never refuse a chocolate with such high recommendation. I know you will enjoy it, and please let me know if there is anything else you require. That was easy. Everything was perfect. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Is there anything you require, monsieur? No, merci. I thought you'd left us. You said you were getting off at Belgrade. You misunderstood me. But, man, your baggage, it's gone. It has been moved into another compartment, that is all. Oh, I see. I wish you a good night, Monsieur Poirot. Good night.
I hope you'll sleep well and that your head will be better in the morning. It is just the cold. I'm now making myself a cup of tea. I hope it'll warm you up. I hope so. Good night. Well, good night, my dear. What a brave girl. On the other hand, that man there in the next cabin, Monsieur Ratchet. He scares the hell out of me. There's something wrong about that man. My daughter always says I'm very intuitive. When Mama gets a hunch, she's dead right. That's what my daughter says. And I've got a hunch about that man. He's next door to me, and I don't like it. I put my bags against the communicating door last night. <laughs> I thought I heard him trying the handle. Well, whoever you are, I'm going right to bed to read. Good night. Good night, madam. Whoever I am. Monsieur Ratchet seems very upset. detective. Monsieur Ratchet? Ce n'est rien, je me suis trompé. Good night, madame. The American lady? Yes, don't worry. You'll know how Mrs. Hubbard is. Imagine to yourself the time I have had with her. She insists, but insists, that there is a man in her compartment. Just imagine it, monsieur. In a space of this size, where would he conceal himself? I argue with her. I point out that it is impossible. She insists. She woke up and there was a man there. And how, I ask, did he get out and leave the door bolted behind him? But she will not listen to reason. Hmm. That one does not leave time to listen. 
The train has stopped, Mr. Michel. We have run into a snowdrift. Heaven knows how long we shall be here. I remember once being snowed in for seven days. Where are we? Between Vinkovsky and Broad. Oh la la. It's time for me to go back to bed. I wish you a good night, monsieur. Or what is left of it. train is still stuck and the snow continues to fall. I should have taken an airplane. Well, I must make the best of it and join the other passengers for breakfast. The moustache comb to tame unruly nuts. Wax to preserve the perfect symmetry of the moustache. The finest of curling irons for the moustache. The train is completely trapped because of the avalanche. Hopefully not for too long. Good morning, Monsieur Michel. Good morning, sir. Please enjoy our special breakfast in our restaurant. This delay is intolerable. I am supposed to be demonstrating the Firenze in Paris in two days. Ah, oh, your electric car. Yes, that's bad luck. Bad luck? If I miss that demonstration, I'll be in deep trouble. Just text your people in Paris and warn them. Of course I tried that. But there is no network service in these mountains. 
my daughter said it would be the easiest way in the world. Just sit on the train until I got to Paris. And now we may be here for days and my boat sails the day after tomorrow. How am I going to catch it now? I can't even send an email to cancel it. Ugh, I'm just too mad to talk about it. My colleagues were to meet me in Paris. They will wonder what has happened to me. I can get no words to them. What will they think? We have refugees to help. Good morning, madam. The snow is a predicament, is it not? I am Russian. Snow is no stranger to me. Ah, the accent. Would it be St. Petersburg? You are very perceptive. Monsieur Poirot, is it not? And may I take it I have the honor of addressing Princess Natalia Dragomirov? We dispense with the old titles these days. My husband, all of my past was taken from me by these Stalinists. When they were gone, I became director of the St. Petersburg Museum of Antiquities to restore and preserve what I can of my country's history. Still, the delay must be vexing. If I must be late for my appointments, then they will wait. I know that I would certainly wait, madame. It has been my extreme pleasure to make your acquaintance, madame. Au revoir, Monsieur Poirot. Mademoiselle, you are not concerned about the train stopping? What can one do? Indeed, this does not make the train move. You have great strength to remain calm at a time like this. I know one far, far stronger than I. And that is? Well, that old lady, for instance. You have probably noticed her. She just has to lift her little finger and ask for something in a polite voice, and the whole train runs. It runs also for my friend Monsieur Book. But that is because he is a director of the line, not because he has a masterful character. You don't have to have a strong will when you have power. But I suspect I did not need to tell you that, Mr... Poirot. Mr. Poirot. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can add to what I've already told you. A beautiful piano. What a luxury. Pity there's no one to play it. Please, do me the courtesy of leaving me alone, if you will. Good morning, Mr. Fauché. You have early customers, I see. Yes, I am stuck serving here as well at breakfast. Everyone is impatient. They keep complaining that the train is not moving. As if I could get out and push it. It's too early for me to order a boxcar. That is the appropriate drink, I believe. A gin, triple sec, lemon and grenadine mix. A drink for a train indeed. But not, perhaps, for my breakfast. I think I will settle for an omelette. Good luck, sir. Miss Nielsen is helping to serve in the dining car. The Orient Express bar is certainly well stocked. How long are we expected to be stranded here? It won't do much good complaining to me. That fellow there with the moustache, he may know something. Excusez-moi, sir. Yes? Monsieur Book asks for you to join him in compartment 203. Uh, look here, Poirot. Can you tell us anything? I can tell you the snow, it will not move aside on its own. Of course. But you obviously have some influence with Book. I am going to see him now. I will ask him if he has any... The train still hasn't left.
Monsieur Brooke is waiting for you in front of room 203. Ah, my good friend, come in. We have need of you. What has occurred? A passenger lies dead in his bed. Stabbed. A passenger? Which passenger? In there. He's an American. A man called Hatchet. It was his valet masterman who was worried that Mr. Hatchet was not awake yet. Pierre Michel, the conductor, decided to break in and found the body. I see. Well, my friend, I think it is best not to touch anything and wait for the police to arrive. Oh, I tried to call the police, but there is no cell tower for many kilometers. We could be stuck in the snow for hours. The murderer is with us. On the train, now! The sooner we catch him, the sooner we'll be out of danger. The Dr. Constantine is already examining the body. Mon ami, this is not a missing train ticket. We must follow procedure. We must wait for the police to secure the crime scene. Please, Poirot. I will take full responsibility. Book, you ask. Well, if we cannot contact the outside world, then... Oh, you are going to drive me crazy. In truth, this problem intrigues me. I was reflecting not half an hour ago that many hours of boredom lay ahead whilst we are stuck here. And now, a problem lies ready to my hand. You accept, then? C'est entendu. You place the matter in my hands. Mr. Poirot, I am Dr. Constantine. Forgive me, Doctor, you are a medical examiner? No, but I have assisted in post-mortems at Nairobi Hospital, where I am a teaching fellow. I am familiar with your excellent institution. I do not intend to perform a full autopsy, but a preliminary examination should be of some use. Of course. May I have a look? Then we can compare notes. Please. If you need any help, I won't be far away. Think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. I do not think that's the right answer. Et voilà. Thank you for your help, Doctor. The watch is broken, the hands are stopped at 1.15 a.m. One would expect that to be the time when the attack occurred. The watch is one... As you see, the victim has been stabbed many times. Several alone would have been fatal. Yes, I agree. An attack most savage. I will, of course, prepare a complete report on my findings. Thank you. I'll take photos. As you see, the several... Yes, I... I will, of course, prepare... Thank you. Did it belong to a ratchet? This phone was deliberately smashed. A handkerchief. There's a letter H embroidered on it. Last night, Monsieur Ratchet said he takes precautions. I see now what he meant. He knew he was in danger and wanted to be ready. Yet it was no use to him. 
I will leave it here for the police. Last night, Monsieur Ratchet said he, he knew he was in danger and wanted... I will leave it here for the... I'm sure I will find some interesting things inside. I'm sure I will find some inter... I'm sure I... I'm sorry, Doctor, but I must question you. Of course. I must be considered under suspicion like everyone else. May I know your movements last night? I share compartment 101 with Mr. Book. He would not stop talking about his beloved train. I listened to him for hours talking about his Orient Express. My friend Book will no doubt confirm this. Did you know the victim? Not at all. I noticed him last night at dinner, but I did not pay much attention. Did you touch anything in here this morning? I checked for a pulse. There was none. Rigor mortis had commenced. The body was cool to the touch. I touched nothing else. What can you tell me about the victim? He died from multiple stab wounds of varying angles and depth. More than one would have been fatal. I would place the time of death roughly between midnight and 2 a.m. With more time, I hope I can be more precise. I assume the open window complicates matters. Indeed. Conditions are not perfect. I wonder what could be in this photo. Daisy. Hmm, interesting. My little gray cells did not let me down. of sleeping pills. Where 
can the killer have gone? This door communicates with compartment 204. The latch is open on this side. This door... Expensive clothing, recently laundered. I shouldn't leave until I have finished this. The chain lock is broken. Monsieur Michel told me that he broke the chain on the door to get into the room. As you see, several al yeah. I will have thank you. This door. Expensive clothes.
a meeting place on the back of a postcard. Someone with the initials A W. Ah, a meeting place on the. Ratchet had an appointment he will never keep. Not very surprising. Not very. I shouldn't leave until I have finished inspecting the crime scene. Box of Box of Ratchet had not very surprising. This door commute. Hmm, the snow is falling only lightly this morning. The murderer would have left tracks in the snow if he had jumped out the window.
This is wrong, but I'm never far from the truth. No, 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 not good. So, the murderer must have exited through Madame Hubert's room. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. I shouldn't leave until I have finished. The chain lock is broke. Monsieur Michel. The watch is one. Last night, Monsieur, he knew he was in. I will leave it. This phone was deliberate. I'm sure I will I shouldn't leave until I have finished inspecting the crime scene. Did you know that not at all?
expensive clothing. The chain lock is broken. Monsieur Michel told me that this door communicates As you see, several alone. Yes, I agree. An attack. I will, of course, prepare a complete report on my findings. Thank you. Last night, he knew he I will leave it here. I wonder what could be in this photo. I wonder what... I shouldn't leave until I have finished inspecting the crime scene. I assume and what he more I would place the time of death rough with more time I hope I did you touch anything in here this morning I checked for a pulse there was none rigor mortis had the body was cool to the touch 
Did you not at all? I'm sorry, Doc. Of course. May I share? He I listened. My friend book. Not very... Not very... Ratchet had an appointment he will never keep. Ratchet had an appointment he will never leave until I have finished inspecting the Not good. I can't imagine Ratchet taking a sleeping pill if he feared for his life. My little grey cells did not let me down. That was easy. I think I've seen everything I need at the moment. I am counting on you to finish your analysis. I'll have a more detailed report for you as soon as I can. So, Poirot, did you find anything out? It's a bit early for the handcuffs, my friend. Even for Hercule Poirot. Do not worry, mon ami. I believe our culprit has no plans to strike again. Monsieur Ratchet was the target. Of that I am convinced. Tell me, Book, 
How did you spend last night? This is a joke, I hope. Don't you trust your old friend? My friend, calm yourself. I must hear your story in order to corroborate other accounts. Ah, naturally. Let me see. Hmm. I went to my compartment after dinner. Uh, Dr. Constantine was already there. We talked about his career. He's a Cambridge man, you know. After university, he returned to his country and has done much good there. He was so interested in the Orient Express. I told him all the anecdotes I know. I'm not certain when we fell asleep, but it was very late. Here is what I have found out. Monsieur Ratchet was stabbed many times. I also found threatening letters in his safe. He had a loaded gun under his pillow, so he was on guard ready to defend himself. However, there was an empty glass with white residue at the bottom. I suspect a barbiturate. Perhaps he was forced to take it. In any case, I am certain he was unconscious, unable to defend himself. I also found several other items at the crime scene, possibly related to the murder. They must be investigated. By all means, Poirot. As fast as you can. I also found liquid for an electronic cigarette, but I could not find a vape. This might belong to the murderer. This criminal is an amateur. I need a list of the passengers with their compartment numbers. Pierre Michel will have it. I must interview the rest of the passengers and the staff. I'll be in the bar car if you need me. We are hours late. Soon I hope help will arrive. Monsieur Michel, I must ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. I will do everything I can to help. First of all, tell me about yourself. Very well. My name, as you know, is Pierre Michel. I am from Calais. I have been with the company for over 15 years. Thank you. No, 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 no. Not good. Voilà. Can you provide me with a listing of the passengers and their rooms, please? Yes, certainly. A smoker? Indeed. Do you smoke e-cigarettes? No. Tobacco only. I would like to reconstruct with your help the events of last night. Monsieur Ratchet retired to bed. When? Almost immediately after dinner, sir. Actually, before we left Belgrade. Did anybody go into his compartment after that? His valet, monsieur. Monsieur Masterman. And then his secretary, the young American gentleman, Monsieur McQueen. And that is the last time you saw or heard of him? No, Monsieur. You forget that Monsieur Ratchet rang his bell around 12.40 a.m., soon after we had stopped. I knocked at the door, but he called out in French, Ce n'est rien, je me suis trompé. I then left to answer another bell that had just rung. Where were you at 1.15 a.m.? I was sitting on my little seat at the end of the car, facing up the corridor. Are you sure? I left a little after 1 a.m. to speak about the snow with my colleague Jean in the bar car. I came back later. There was a call. I remember speaking to you. Indeed, I remember. Carry on. It was the American lady, Madame Hubbard. She thought she saw a man in her compartment. Then, around 1.50 a.m., I made the bed for Monsieur Ratchet's secretary, Monsieur McQueen. He had spent the evening talking with the English Captain Arbuthnot. At 2 a.m., I returned to my place and stayed there until dawn. 
What is the last station where we stopped? Vinkovsky. Could someone have come on board? Possibly. I was very busy. On into the weather, we were a few minutes late. We left at 12.10 a.m. That was easy. Good morning, madam. I am Hercule Poirot. Caroline Hubbard. What can I do for you, Mr. Poirot? I am the bearer of unfortunate news. It's obvious with all the commotion that something has happened. Madame Hubbard, I am afraid your neighbor, Monsieur Ratchet, was murdered last night. <gasps> oh my god! I knew it! I knew it! I would like to ask you some questions, but first, may I inspect your room? Of course, yes, you must. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. This door connects to Monsieur Ratchet's compartment. It was latched on this side. The luxury of the Orient Express is present in every detail. Here is a jacket button. It bears the logo of the Orient Express. This door connects to Monsieur Ratchet's compartment. It was latched on this side. Come to Poirot, my exquisitely sculpted friend. Madame, please tell me about last night. The murderer was right here in my compartment. I woke up. All in the dark it was. I was just so scared I couldn't scream. I pressed the call button. I pressed and pressed. I heard footsteps running in the corridor, then a knock on my door. Come in, I screamed. And I switched on the lights at the same time. And would you believe it? There wasn't a soul there. You think he went back into the other compartment? How do I know where he went? I had my eyes shut tight. The conductor came in. I told the man what had happened, and he didn't seem to believe me. I asked him to search the room, but he found nothing. I told the conductor to look at the door between the compartments, and sure enough, it wasn't bolted. Well, I soon saw to that. I told him to bolt it, then and there. How is it you didn't bolt the door between the two compartments? But I had. Well, as a matter of fact, I 
asked that Swedish lady, um, Olsen, uh, Greta, if it was bolted, and she said it was. How was it you could not see for yourself? I was already in bed, and my toiletry bag was hanging on the hook of the door. I couldn't see the latch from where I was. What time was it when you asked her to do this for you? Oh, it must have been around 10.30 or 10.45 p.m. She'd come along to see if I had an aspirin. But instead of opening my door, she opened Mr. Ratchet's door by mistake. He said something quite rude, like, Not a chance, lady, you're too old. <laughs> it shocked her. She came in. I told her where to find the aspirin, and she got it out of my toiletry bag. <sighs> Poor girl, she didn't have a good night. The same could be said for Monsieur Ratchet. It appears Mademoiselle Olsen may be the last person to see Ratchet alive. Is this your handkerchief? No, not at all. Yet it is embroidered with an initial H, like your name. I don't care, it's not mine, and I would certainly never buy something so impractical as that frilly thing. Are you a smoker? No, definitely not. Filthy habit. I found a jacket button on your table. It looks like it belongs to... A train employee. The button bears the logo of the Orient Express. Well, of course, the conductor came in last night, but he didn't go near that table. Still, it's a safe bet that it belongs to the conductor. I'll check his jacket later, to be sure. I have not finished inspecting your room, if you don't mind. Mrs. Rubard was telling the truth about the latch of the connecting door. This hook is probably where Mrs. Rubard hung her toiletry bag. This hook is probably where... This door connects to Monsieur Ratchet's compartment. It was latched on this side. I can see the latch very well from here, even with the toiletry bag. Attached. I'll have to clear that up with Mrs. Obaud. Mrs. Obaud, you told me that the door connecting the two compartments was closed, correct? Yes, it was, as I told you. I was already in bed and my toiletry bag was hanging on the hook of the door. I couldn't see the latch from where I was. That's why I asked Miss Olsen to check if it was closed. Are you sure everything you've told me is accurate, Madame Hubbard? Of course. I have an excellent memory. Mrs. Hubbard, I tested putting your toiletry bag on the door hook as you told me. From your bed, you can easily see the latch on the door. The toiletry bag does not hide the latch at all. Are you saying I'm lying? It may have been stuck somehow in a different position, or I may not have seen it in the darkness. Or I didn't think to look, you irritating man. Details matter, madame. A man has been most savagely murdered. You will excuse me if I attempt to separate the truth from the false. Forget my toiletry bag and focus on who entered my compartment. Probably after killing Mr. Ratchet. Madame Hubbard is a force to be reckoned with, but I suspect I'm not done with her. Thank you for your assistance, madame.
I must admit I'm not right this time. While Monsieur Michel was chatting with Monsieur Fauché in the bar car between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m., the murderer could have escaped Ratchet's room without being seen. That was easy. I found a button from an Orient Express staff jacket. Did you lose one by any chance? No, monsieur. As you can see, I have all my buttons. It is not mine. I believe I am addressing Monsieur Hector McQueen. Guilty as charged. I beg your pardon? Oh, sorry. Just an expression. Uh, my father used to say it. You must have had an interesting childhood. I am Hercule Poirot. No need to be modest. You're a detective. You are Monsieur Ratchet's secretary? I am Mr. Ratchet's secretary. Just over a year. I mainly take care of translating certain texts for him. Mr. Ratchet only speaks English. Prepare yourself for a shock. Your employer, Monsieur Ratchet, is dead. So they got him after all. What do you mean? You are assuming he was murdered? I know he had enemies. What can you tell me about Monsieur Ratchet? He was American. He was an antiques dealer. I don't know much more. Mr. Ratchet never saw his life, but I think... or someone. Yes? He started getting letters. Threat... Ratchet had asked for my help. Asked you? No, I didn't know. He knew he was in danger. When did you last see him? Last night around 10 o'clock, I should say. Did you like your employer, Monsieur McQueen? No, I did not. He was, I'm sure, a, a cruel and dangerous man. Can you tell me your movements last night? I went back to my compartment. I read a little. In Belgrade, I went out onto the platform to smoke, but it was cold. I quickly went back in. I then went to Mr. Ratchet's compartment to take some dictation for him. I left around 10 o'clock. I saw Captain Arbuthnot. We ended up chatting in my compartment. Then we went out on the platform to quickly stretch our legs at Minkowski. He left around 2 o'clock. Thank you. I will need to check Monsieur McQueen's story with Captain Arbuthnot. I found a diary in Monsieur Ratchet's safe. Did you know about it? I kept a business appointment book, but I know he had a personal diary as well. That looks like it. Are you a smoker? Yes, I smoke cigarettes. I've tried to quit, but no luck. 
Can you give me this letter, please? Of course, here it is. Was Monsieur Ratchet a smoker? No, no, he hated the smell of smoke. Monsieur Edward Masterman, I believe. May I ask you some questions? Mm, I can barely talk. I have a terrible toothache. We have a doctor on board the train. Perhaps... I do not need a doctor. I use essential oils. If you can find my flask of clove oil in my box, I would be grateful. Fine, if you insist. I will help you. Oh, this toothache is torture. By the smell, I think that the jojoba oil spilled on the other bottles, leaving their labels illegible. I must find another way to find which one is Masterman's toothache remedy. The weighing scale is soaked in jojoba oil. It's unusable. Ah, this old scale will do the job. To start, I must first arrange the vials from the lightest to the heaviest. This toothache is torture. To start, I must first arrange the vials from the lightest to the heaviest.
Now that I know the order, I think that I can easily guess which one is the clove oil. Here is Monsieur Masterman's remedy. Here is your remedy. I hope it will help. Thank you very much, sir. Ah, well. I can finally speak without too much pain. I'm ready to answer your questions. You are Monsieur Ratchet's valet? Yes, sir. That is correct. Were you told that your employer was murdered? Yes, sir. A very shocking occurrence. No, 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 no. Not good. My little grey cells did not let me down. At what hour did you last see Monsieur Ratchet? It must have been around 9 p.m., sir. That or a little after. I went to bed around 10.30 p.m., same as the person who shares my room, Mr. Foscarelli. He almost immediately began snoring. What did you do then? I read, sir. And I spent a while soothing my toothache with clove oil and listening to the snoring. Did you hear anything during the night? Yes. My roommate snoring. Are you a smoker? Yes, sir. I have a cigarette now and then to relax. Tell me about your employer, Monsieur Ratchet. I've been working for him for nine months. I should not wish to speak ill of the dead, but he was... Uh... Not a gentleman, sir. Did you know that he had enemies? Yes, sir. I heard him discussing some threatening letters, sir, with Mr. McQueen. Did he mention these letters to you? He had been reading a letter when I came in. He asked me if I was the one who put it in his compartment. I told him that I had done no such thing, and he should report it to the police at the next station. How did he respond? He laughed, sir. <laughs> You're joking. I do not joke, sir. Forgive me, I can see you do not. Was he taking sleeping pills? Always when traveling by train, sir. He said he couldn't sleep otherwise. Last night he asked me to give him two. I did so along with a glass of water. He dissolved them in the water. Did you see him drink the water? No, sir. I left right after I gave him the pills. Was Monsieur Ratchet a smoker? No. He finds smokers disgusting. Can you tell me again why you gave sleeping pills to Monsieur Ratchet? Yes, I gave him the pills because when he takes the train, he has trouble sleeping. The letter must have worried him. He specifically asked me to prepare the sleeping pills. I didn't see him drink the water with the pills in it. <laughs> Monsieur, I believe you are not telling me the truth. What? How can you say that? He received threatening letters. One, it seems, last night. Did you know he had a gun under his pillow? And even asked for my help to watch over him? I find it strange that he asked you for sleeping pills when he was afraid for his life and prepared to defend himself. I'm sure I don't know. Maybe to calm his nerves. Maybe out of habit. It makes no sense. Wait, please. Isn't it possible that Mr. Ratchet asked me to prepare the pills, but didn't plan to drink them for some reason? It is possible. But I am a student of character, monsieur, and the Monsieur Ratchet you describe is not the man I met. If you'll excuse me, my toothache is getting worse again. I'm afraid this time you must prepare your own clove oil.
This is wrong, but I'm never far from the truth. Think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. No, 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 not good. impersonated Ratchet by calling Monsieur Michel to make it seem that Ratchet was still alive at 12.37 a.m. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. This appears to be a good lead. Please, do me the courtesy of... I'm sorry. The Orient Express bar is certainly well stocked. So, my friend, 
Have you found our killer? Not yet, but I will tell you what I have learned. Please. Our assassin could have gotten on the train at Vinkovsky disguised as a conductor, entered Ratchet's room, and killed him. Then he walked out through Madame Hubbard's connecting door, where he lost a button from his jacket. He had to wait for Monsieur Michel to be absent. He waited too long. The train had left the station. He was trapped aboard. Indeed. He had opened the window to make it look that he'd escaped that way. However, if he waited until the train stopped again due to snow, his footprints would have been found. The murderer is still among us, on the train. There's a problem with the second-class toilets. What now? All morning passengers have been complaining that the door is locked, so I went to check. I knocked, but no one answered. I didn't think I should open it without speaking to you first. You did well, Monsieur Michel. Lead the way. I use my master key. But who is she? Is she alive? She is breathing. Then if she is dead, isn't she our murderer? That, my friend, is what we must find out. The ticket reads, Joanna Locke, traveling in compartment 105. The ticket reads, Joanna Locke. Miss, can you hear me? Hmm? Hmm. She's breathing. Her pulse is strong. There is no sign of physical violence. This woman is sleeping very soundly. This woman is sound asleep. Given her location, I would say she has been drugged and deposited here. Well, at least it's not another murder on my train. The train is, of course, full. Monsieur, the list I gave you indicates that Hildegard Schmidt shares her compartment. I will want to talk to her later. For now, we will concentrate on this mysterious young lady. Let's return her to her more comfortable bed. Good idea. Pierre, locate this woman's room and fetch the doctor. Yes, sir. I will question her when she wakes up. Please, let me know what you learn. Mademoiselle Locke's compartment is 105. I suggest we return her to her more comfortable bed. Yes, hopefully she will awaken soon. A cup of tea with white residue at the bottom. A briefcase and a wagon lee conductor's jacket, and the button is missing. A briefcase. A briefcase and a vet.
a briefcase and a vet. to find the combination. Have you tried zero, 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 zero? Poirot, well, what if the briefcase is booby-trapped? If you need a break, I can ask Jean to make you some coffee. Poirot, well, I'm disappointed in you. I was certain you would have it by now. Have you tried one, two, three, four? So, Poirot, well, any luck so far? No, that's mine. I never remember my passwords, so I make them easy ones. But of course you know what you're doing. It is booby-trapped, is it? If you need a break, I can ask Jean to make you some coffee. We really need to find the combination. Book, silent like a mouse, please. I'm sorry, you're right. I'll be quiet now. You need to concentrate. I will not utter another word. Not one. Book, there will be another murder on the Orient Express in a moment. She has a gun. Come, come, Poirot. Criminals are often known to carry one. Ratchet was stabbed, not shot. But then why take it on the train? This badge says that Joanna Locke is an American detective with the Berkshire Police Department in Massachusetts. An American police officer? Oh. Mademoiselle Locke seems very interested in our victim. Of course. She has studied her target. Possibly. Her driver's license confirms her identity. She is American. These are fake IDs. It's certain. Her driver's license confirms... These are... The stuffed animal is the same as in the photo found at the crime scene. What a coincidence! Another lock appears to have been investigating Monsieur Ratchet. Look! She's waking up! Thanks to you, I would not be surprised if our murder victim were also waking up. I... What? What's all the yelling about? Who are you? Give me a good reason why you should not be in handcuffs. I can give you a reason, Book. Whose handcuffs will we use? I have none. Do you? Well, I... You are Joanna Locke, mademoiselle? Yeah, yes, um... Joanna Locke. 
I'm, um, I'm a detective. Berkshire, Massachusetts Police. I have found your credentials, mademoiselle. And I know who you are, Mr. Poirot. Then if the introductions are complete, perhaps the explanations may begin. I... I I'll try. It's simple, really. I... I'm on the trail of a murderer. I had just been promoted to detective after five years on patrol. It was my first time on a major case. It had been a month since Daisy Armstrong was kidnapped. The Armstrongs were desperate for some sign of hope. I was there only for paperwork, to fill in some blanks. The investigation is now part of a pile of investigations, and my captain sent me here just to dot some I's and cross some T's. The crime was audacious. How could the kidnapper know which was the window of Daisy's room? No, they could use a ladder to reach it, and no, they could enter the room without being seen. The misspellings are clearly on purpose, and they didn't return the child when the ransom was paid. How could the child be taken with so many people in the house? I can't imagine the pain her parents felt when they realized Daisy was gone. How are they going to feel when they realize I have no answers for them? Only more questions. That's why I'm here. A damn computer glitch. Or somebody pushed delete instead of save. Whatever happened, we lost the nanny's deposition. So my entire contribution to the investigation is to take it again. The phone record of the night of the kidnapping. The last call was for 911. I can't imagine the pain her parents felt when they realized Daisy was gone. How are they going to feel when they realize I have no answers for them? Only more questions. A topographical map. Often more important than a road map in these mountains. Good evening. Colonel Armstrong? Yes. You're the detective they phoned about. Joanna Locke. I don't remember you. I'm newly assigned to the case. It's about time more detectives were involved. My wife, Sonia, she... she hasn't been herself. Every day is a waking nightmare for us. Tell me you've uncovered something new. I'm here to speak to your daughter's nanny. There was a computer problem. Her earlier statement has been lost. Oh. I see. We had hoped... Well, do as you wish. I won't be far if you need me.
their fairy tale became a nightmare. I've earned a gold mustache. What a dear child. How are you doing? Are you holding up? You know, in the military, you're supposed to have the stiffest of upper lips. The Desert War taught me that soon enough. But this, it's difficult. Damned difficult. Harder on my good lady, of course. Do you know where I can find Miss Moreau? Her room is upstairs across the hall from... Daisy's. She seldom leaves it. I won't be long. Take whatever time you need. Hello, are you Suzanne Moreau, Daisy's nanny? Yes. I'm Joanna Locke, a detective working on Daisy's case. Is there any news? I'm afraid not. How can I help you? I'm really sorry. I'm afraid I have to take your statement again concerning the evening of Daisy's disappearance. There was a computer problem. Your statement was accidentally deleted. Of course. I want to help any way I can. Tell me about that night in your own words. The Armstrongs had a party to raise money for a museum. I think. Mrs. Armstrong is on her board. I was in charge of Daisy. I stayed with the little one all evening, playing with her and reading books to her. She couldn't sleep with all the noise and the comings and goings. When did you notice Daisy was missing? I was only gone five minutes to... to phone my mother. She's in the hospital. When I returned, Daisy wasn't in her bed. I thought she might have gone to look at the party, but then... I saw the handsome note on her pillow. I screamed and screamed. I couldn't stop. Did you notice anything unusual before that? I was with Daisy all evening. Finally, she fell asleep. I didn't see anyone else or notice anything in particular. Do you have any idea who did this? No! I can't see who could have done such a horrible thing. The Armstrongs are such good people. Like my own family. Thank you for giving me your statement again. I'll get back to you if I have any questions. I won't be far. Okay, I have Suzanne's statement, but her answers need some checking. Nothing shocks me here. This information does not correspond to what Suzanne told me. Suzanne said she left Daisy alone for five minutes, but Mrs. Armstrong says she stayed with Daisy for a while and Suzanne did not return. Score, one for the good guys. Lyon, in France, a toy train. Now here I am on a real one. castle. When I was a kid, I had a police station and a tiny squad car with a siren that really worked. The world through the eyes of a child seems so sweet. Mrs. Armstrong, my name is Joanna Locke. I'm a detective investigating the kidnapping of your daughter. May I talk to you? When is your baby due? Mrs. Armstrong? Sonia? I don't want to talk. I just want to see my daughter again. That's all that matters. The poor woman.
That's it. No rookie mistake there. Mrs. Armstrong? Let me show you this. Daisy. My little Daisy. I miss her so much. How good it is to see her face. I can't imagine the pain you're feeling right now. She loved her little stuffed animal, Fluffy. She took him everywhere with her. The kidnappers took it as well. They didn't have to. That means they wouldn't hurt her, doesn't it? Every lead will be followed up. You have my word on that. Thank you. I shouldn't lose hope. Somehow. I know it isn't my case. But I just made a promise. And I mean to keep it. Do you know where I can find Miss Murrow? She's in her room. Last door on the left. Tell me about the night Daisy was taken, especially anything about your daughter and Suzanne Moreau. Apart from seeing to our guests, I took a moment to check on Suzanne and Daisy in Daisy's room. Suzanne wasn't there, but Daisy was asleep. I sat with her for 10 minutes or so. Suzanne didn't return while I was there, but there's no reason for her to sit there all night when Daisy is asleep, I went back downstairs. May I come back? If I have more questions? Of course. Anything. Thing I can do. Okay, the story is Sonia and Suzanne. Nothing shocks me here. That is not exactly what Suzanne told me earlier. Suzanne was on the phone more than five minutes. That's it. No rookie mistake there. If I understand you correctly, you left Daisy when she was not asleep? The party was very loud. Daisy was too wound up to sleep. I read her a motley mule detective story to try and put her to sleep. Daisy finally fell asleep. Right before motley mule solved his case in the book I was reading her. I had to make a quick phone call. No more than five minutes. But when I came back, Daisy was gone. <laughs> Are you sure you were only gone for five minutes? Five, six, what does it matter? It was very quick. What you're telling me doesn't really agree with what Mrs. Armstrong says. Mrs. Armstrong must have looked in right after I'd left. That's how it could have happened. But the timing of the kidnapping had to be so precise. How could it be? I need to find something more concrete. You say you were only away five or six minutes. But Mrs. Armstrong says she was alone there more like 10 minutes. And the phone record shows that you stayed on the call for more than 30 minutes, way longer than you said. My mother is extremely ill. It's difficult for me. I may have lost track of time. When I came back, Daisy had disappeared. It must have been a coincidence. You have to be precise, Suzanne. A little girl's life is at stake. Why are you doing this? I didn't do anything wrong. I would never out Daisy. I need to check Suzanne's story. She's panicking. Why now? What is she afraid of? I should see if the Armstrongs can confirm what Suzanne told me. I spoke with Suzanne. She was phoning her mother. That's why you didn't see her when you went to check on Daisy. Yes, her mother. I tried to call the poor woman earlier that week, but 
The hospital said she's been in a medically induced coma for more than two months. Suzanne told me she called her mother, but she would have known her mother was in a coma. Did you see Miss Moreau during the party? I remember seeing her at some point, but otherwise, no. I was too busy with my guests. Wear the smile, shake the proffered hand. Ms. Moreau told me she called her mother. Well, why not? I believe they are very close, and the poor woman is not well. She needs some experimental treatment that isn't available yet in France. I won't be long. Take whatever time you need. I should see if the Armstrong... Arms can confirm what Suzanne told me. 